Good morning. It is Wednesday, December 27th, and I actually pulled a Josh. I was late this morning. 2.2 miles. Um, typically, I get up at around 530 and try to be at the office at 715. And I woke up to a notification from House Call Pro at 701. So I made it to the first job on time, which is good. But uh, it stinks that I was late. Um, I finished my first job of the day. It was a tankless boiler maintenance as well as a tankless flush on a water heater. Um, they have a certain brand uh, water heater as well as a certain brand boiler that I cannot say on the channel, but that's why I couldn't record that. I'm headed off to my second job of the day, which is a boiler maintenance to a customer that we have history with, but I don't know the history because we're switching from Service Pal to House Call Pro, so in House Call Pro we don't have all the histories from the past, but I don't think I've been there before. I think it's been other people, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so I I'm here about 32 minutes early. Um, I figured it'd be fine because they get a message when I'm on the way and if it wasn't fine they usually would hopefully respond to the message and say that they're not available until the time in the schedule but I have to wait. She is going to clear out a pathway for me in the garage so hopefully it's not a mess. There was a mess up in the schedule for that one because uh, it was for a plumbing mainline uh, related thing that um, that's not me, I'm not equipped for that, so I'm on my way now to furnace issues. Uh, we'll see whether or not they really have a furnace. A lot of the times they just call it a furnace and it's not, it's a boiler, but we'll see what happens. So when I walked in, the customer said that it's going to be like an easy fix, it's just a wire. And then the contractor, the general contractor who's doing a lot of work on the house was like, Oh yeah, there was just this wire that was in the way and it caused flame rollout. But here was just me uh, just watching what's happening. You could see the hot surface igniter glows and then our gas valve opens, our flame lights. But uh, if you look over on the left side of the, the burner rows, one of those burners is sputtering. And you'll find out why later on, but... It looks like a burner. Yeah, they were like, oh, it's gonna be something, something super easy and simple. We just need you to get it running. And there were a bunch of code issues as far as like the dryer venting, it's a gas dryer, they're venting with plastic flexible tubing. Um, the venting on the water heater was too small. Um, but yeah, so didn't really get to record as much and as in depth as I would have liked to, but here's the, uh, the clips. How long has it been since it's run, you know? And you can see here, I had to cut the combustion analysis because the levels were so high that they would ruin my sensor, carbon monoxide levels. Okay, so we had very high carbon monoxide and one of these burners uh, wasn't burning right and that was this one. If you look, there is a cobweb in there. Um, so I will fish that out piece of wire. It's still in there. Okay, 
so after I cleaned that out, I put it all back together, doing a combustion test again, and much better readings right now. I did check visually with the camera in a hole in the back for any cracks or defects in the heat exchanger, and I hooked up my manometer to the pressure port tapping with just the fan running to see if there was any pressure coming into the heat exchanger, and I had no pressure change. I saw no cracks. So I think it was just a matter of that clogged uh, orifice. Um, the rollout switch was stripped because this wire was sitting into the unit. And I didn't have any white, but I replaced it with a crimp connector just so like you can't, can't be undone. And then I pulled the wires back so that they'll all be uh, held together. I'm gonna let it run for a little bit. We have some carbon monoxide, but not a lot. Uh, and I did make sure to watch the flame when the fan kicked on and there was no change. So I think we'll be okay. Okay, so that was um, a nice one. Uh, don't usually get to see furnaces, it's usually boilers. But uh, burning safely, results are there. She uh, worked with the police department, so she gets the police discount. Um, she was very happy with the Turn service. Right onto North Central Avenue. Now Turn I left am onto on my Avenue. way to Rosalyn Heights for a Burnham boiler not working. Uh, after that, I have a water heater repair that I'll be doing. I went out to a ream warranty call, and the unit was it wasn't like packed together. But the drip light could have been lower to the ground, which is a code requirement. And the supply, the cold water supply and the hot water out At the light. were Turn uh, left flexible up to pipes. And, and we're not allowed to do that in New York. But uh, the call was for a gas valve. I had replaced the gas valve. It was a gas leak. And it made him aware he needs to do those uh, changes. Turn left and he called us to do them. But, 30 minute drive to Roslyn Heights. We'll see what's going on there. Okay, so Burnham Alpine, six days without heat. Um, our blower is not running. It is getting power. The, there's a water on the floor from a leak up here, which wasn't leaking until the system got cold. Six zones and the domestic water tank is heavily corroded all around as well as some drips and water coming from up top not uh, on serial number Placed the high limit sensor in 1616. Um, that high limit sensor has been replaced, but it's still the old one. I'm actually going to try jumping it out to see if anything happened. I hear it beeping because the battery is dying. That's what the beeping is. Well, that beeping, no, I want to change my. I want to change my. Um... So that was like a nightmare. I wish I had recorded absolutely everything. Um, she was breathing down my back the whole time and literally standing in the doorway, like in the doorway. And she's uh, rather large. So I was, I literally couldn't even walk by her with my tool bag. Like I had to rub my tool bag up against her stomach and uh, she didn't want me to touch anything. Said it looks like the blower is bad. Tested for power with the blower. She was like, okay, that's what the last guy said. And I noticed some other things. I would have liked to have tested other things to make sure that everything else was okay. She declined. You can pause to read this, but this is what I put into the house call for. Um, she knows that it could be more than the blower, but she just wants to go with the blower. So, yeah pick it up today and we'll put it in tomorrow. 
on to the next. Okay, so I am actually to going to Hicksville to go pick up the part, and I'm going to come back and put it in. Um, just get this over with. It's going to be nice. And hopefully that's the only issue. If, if there's more issues, I'm going to laugh. Because she didn't want me to test anything else, so it's where it is. Okay, so I'm here. Got my carbon monoxide detector on. Everything I need is in there. Uh, parts and stuff, and then we have a socket set and my tool bag. And whenever she decides to open the garage door, we can get started. Here's the unit. Shut power off, shut the gas off. Gonna disconnect this union, spin this out, then take the copper plate of the heat exchanger out. And I'm gonna pull the burner plate off. I have not seen the inside yet. That's not two years of buildup. This isn't two years since it's been cleaned. Yeah. It's actually pretty uh, bad. If you actually, if you want to look at the screen, so you see like in between all these tubes, mm -hmm. that's where the exhaust gases need to blow past. Mm -hmm. That could have been what killed the motor because it has to work harder to push it through. So, so is, what color should it be? It should be gone because it's a Phillips head screw. They were ne they never put a screw on this, uh, a screwdriver on this to take the screw off. Part of annual maintenance is taking this all apart and cleaning and inspecting it. Okay. So we'll see what it looks like inside. I don't think it's going to be too bad because it looks fairly clean coming in the inlet. So I just pulled off the swirl plate and it does have a crack in it. And this is all very, very caked up with uh, dirt. I mean, it's a good layer, as well as the blower wheel. So that's that's extra weight on the blower. And actually, you can you can't even spin it. Well, so this will be the new one. Okay, so I just did a dry cleaning, and you can see now that you can see in between the tubes, it's not plugged up. And I'm gonna rinse it too with water. See how you can see through them now? Okay. But it kind of looks very hard, why? Looks hard. When I touch it, it looks, it looks like... Um, like crusty? Yeah. Yeah, because over time, this gets moist and it's metal. Okay. So it corrodes a little bit. It's a little bit of corrosion. It's never going to be perfectly smooth, but the water is going to try to break some of that down. And with the water, you can see really big gaps now. But it's always going to have that like mm -hmm. texture. It's never really going to come off. Mm -hmm. Going through our startup, there's the lower kicking on. So now we're already further than we were before. And I'll get my combustion analyzer and make sure that it's burning safely once I know it starts up. Now with a clean heat exchanger, swirl plate, and everything. Ignition test. There's our igniter sparking. And we should go to ignition. And there we have flame. Hard to see, but it's there. It's bright and orange, so. Start heating up. And I'll do a combustion test back here. Finished up, put the label here and the other 
history from the other company. Put our sticker and our combustion analysis results. And we are at 170 degrees. 169. And we are now off to the next. She ended off that call by saying as I walked out the door, if she finds better prices, she will use them instead of us. So, nice to have disrespectful, unappreciative homeowners who, uh, I was using booties to go in and out, but then she was like, no, don't use the booties because it, whatever, that extra 10 seconds to take them on and off was, she didn't want to have to pay for. So I insisted on wearing them. She said, no, just don't, it's fine. It's going to be dusty no matter what. So I said, okay, and I stopped wearing them. And then she complained as I was walking out the door. Now there are footprints everywhere. So that was also great. But on the way to the next, which is uh, fixing some things on a water heater. Okay, so I'm home now, but stay tuned for the end of the video. Uh, I'll be posting in the end of the video a clip of her service call, like the call that she placed in the office to schedule. Then the call between her and Mike, because she was giving me a very hard time and she wanted to speak with him. And then a call that came in about 30 minutes ago that uh, Mike just sent to me uh, with her, again, trying to negotiate the pricing. So uh, stay tuned for that. So here is the unit. I had to replace the gas valve because it was leaking gas. And these flex lines are not allowed. This also needs to come low to the ground. But this is why he really called, because this is leaking. So I'm still going to get rid of the flex pipe. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I'm going to get rid of the flex pipes and extend that. And we'll cut out to, uh, to over here and use a uh, coupling. Actually, I might be able to just be able to see what I do. But he shut the main water off. I'm going to drain it not fully but most of it shut this to pilot so it doesn't try to heat it okay so cut the uh, three quarter coming in there took out the flex lines and I cut back that half inch line all the way over here and I'm just gonna bring it three quarter all the way um, and then I wrap some Teflon around a nut uh, driver, that way I can actually fit it in between here to wrap it. Okay, so two 90s, two male adapters, street 90, regular 90, regular 90, street 90, inch and a half by inch and three quarter coupling, half inch coupling, half inch pipe, three quarter pipe, and we see if it leaks. And the homeowner helped hold these together while I press them. So if they, those ones leak, it's on him. Oh yeah, do you want to open up the water main? Yeah, I'll open it up. It's a nice uh, homeowner. That's it. No leaks. Got some nice brown water while uh, purging out the air. But now it is time to wrap up and get out. Clean up and get out. And now, just making sure everything goes back where I took it from. Oh no. Those right there. Bungee cord it all so it doesn't move. Press stuff on back in here. And box of garbage. Bucket of garbage. And then I have this bucket here with all these little 
pieces of uh, scrappish, kind of unused copper. Make sure that this hose doesn't get dirty. to Cedar Street. Okay, so that's gonna be it. Um, customer was super nice. I I was there for a ream warranty at one point, uh, not too long ago. And uh, I guess he only called because the actual thing was leaking. Um, not really because he Street. wanted to get rid of the flexible lines, but the flexible lines are gone. So got a little bit more um, work out of him, I guess. And he plans on using us regularly. He wants to start to call us for AC, um, for heating. So turn we'll see what left happens with that. Street. Then turn right onto um, Jericho Turnpike. What else? Yeah, that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed watching the video. Uh, comment any advice or criticism or feedback. And subscribe. Thanks for watching. Morning, Pat Doctor. Can I help you? Good morning. Um, I have this Boham boiler, and um, it's not working. It's on the face. I'm afraid it needs a pad. Okay, what kind of know. boiler do you have? Is the Boham? Burnham? B U R B U R A M. Okay, and where are you located? Roslyn Heights. Roslyn Heights? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever used us before? No. Okay, is it a gas boiler? It's a gas boiler. Yes? Yes. Okay, we have a 115 trip charge, and our labor is okay. 225 an hour. Okay, is it on fixed it? Because I don't know if it's a patch that is not working or something. Okay, uh, let me see if I can get someone out there today. If not, I can probably do tomorrow. Hold on one moment. Um, I can get somebody out there today if you'd like. Okay. Uh, between, let's see, between 11 and 1. Mm -hmm. All right, so what is, let me get your okay. information. What is your name? The leader is going to say 115 to show up to diagnose the problem and then 220 something or so every hour. No, that's a correct. You were told one for the 115 trip charge and the hourly rate is 225 per hour. Yeah, but again, if that's going to be the hourly rate 225, I would yeah. think that that would be when they begin to install the, the pads and they you begin to charge it. If they say it's 220 something per hourly rate, mm -hmm. I would think that when it gets the pads here, the, 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 um, the part needs to order. When he wants to install that part, I would think that that's when you will be charging per hour. Yeah. Uh huh, but he didn't fix anything yet. Yeah. And our hourly rate is $225. So at a minimum, you're paying $340 plus tax for one hour of labor, the first hour of labor at all. Yeah, I hear you, but I'm saying though, he's not even fixing the machine yet. So why are we paying per hour rate? Because that's what you agreed to and that's what we diagnosed. We diagnosed that you have a failure of the blower motor. 
Yeah. Uh-huh. We gave you a price to that. And we also told you we'd like to continue to diagnose and see if there's anything else wrong, which you refused to let us do. Yeah, because I just know the macron told me that the blower was the issue. Okay, then why yeah. is the macron here then? You're talking to me. Let me tell you. No, sir, hold on, hold on. Why you guys are here is because macron had told me it would take me like two weeks yes, for me to get the price. We're telling you that we have access to it today and we can be back tomorrow. So obviously okay. macron, you know, doesn't really know it, doesn't take care of their customers the way we do. You need a part, I can get it today. So, What's the problem, man? So give me a little break so I can be able to pay him something because I don't want to. I want no, you guys you're, to. You're, you're, you're going to pay for our trip charge and our hourly rate. Uh -huh. The labor we spent today on site. Yeah. You're going to pay a deposit on the part. Mm -hmm. And when we come back, you're going to have to pay the remaining balance of the part and the labor to install the part. Aren't you going to give me some kind of discount? No. Why? Why don't I give you a discount? Yeah, because. Do, have, 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 do you have a relationship with us? Have we been here before? Do you have a service agreement with us? You, this is the first time we've ever served you. You're asking for a discount. Yeah, because I could. No, I, I could. We gave you a price up front in mm -hmm. advance before you made an appointment, and we're fulfilling our commitment to you. Another plumber can't get in the park for, for weeks. We can get it tomorrow. Anyway, let me, let me because of the time because of the time frame, I would just say okay to this now. But n normally, when I have people work for me, help me to fix things around the house. I normally want to get a clear understanding of how much we you know we're talking about. So I don't want to keep calling back and forth here. Because my understanding was that when he comes here, if he, if he starts to fix the issue, it's 22, um, 200 and something dollar per hour. That was my understanding. But for him to just want to take um, 225, the issue is still the same, kind of beats my imagination. But because I need the heat to keep working, I'm going to say, okay, for now. You, know, you understand? Because I've had my crew come in and look at it and say, it take me two weeks, and I don't want to wait for that long. Yeah, you understand? Us. Yeah, that's why I should let me call somebody else. Quality doesn't cost it pays. Sorry? Okay? So we're, we're not the kind of company that's gonna, you know, you know, play games. You know, you called us, we came mm. as agreed, as promised. Right? Mm. You knew the rates in advance. We told you you have a part that's bad. You refuse to let us continue diagnosing, you know, your system because for whatever reason I don't know why. Yeah, I didn't want you guys to because I didn't want to compound the issues. I just they know they told me to blow that spot. So I didn't yes, want them to compound the issue. Yeah. Let's just do it because I just want the issue to be resolved. That's all. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Be well. Okay. Thanks. So you say I... you can get it. Are you through with him? Are you done with him? Good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Very good. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. He's saying that you can get it today and come tomorrow. That's what he said. So then that's what will go. Yeah. So I'm gonna get it done tomorrow. That's so what. That's, again, it's yeah, your that's word what now. he said. That's what he's saying now. Yeah. I don't want any other phone call. You understand what I'm saying? No, yeah, yeah. He now says tomorrow, so I'm looking for tomorrow. If I'm going to agree to his price, because he was saying that, oh, you were told up front. Now he's telling me again up front that we're going to get it done tomorrow. Yes. So we don't want to go back on that tomorrow. I don't want to say, oh, sorry, we can't do it tomorrow. That's going to be a breach of our, our agreement. We, we said we could do it tomorrow. Yeah. That's what we said, so that's what goes. Okay. So I don't want us to come to a point where we say, oh, sorry, we can't get it tomorrow. We're going to get it on Friday. Though. That's mean, not going to be. Things happen. The, the part could suddenly disappear. If that's the case, then, and, you know. But that's why you should go secure the parts already. You say you found it in three other locations. So secure the parts already, and then let's get it on tomorrow. Yes, we're, 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 we're going to take a deposit, and we're going to get it done tomorrow. Okay. So how do I pay you? Uh, we take card or cash on completion. Uh, I have a card reader. Um, okay, uh, let him know that I'm sticking to his spot for tomorrow. So I don't know how you're going to get in there. I don't want to get it because I'll say, oh, no, we, we can get it tomorrow. It'll be next to you. You know, I don't want to get it. Because I'm paying over a thousand more compared to what my team charged me. But because of that time frame, which is two weeks time, I don't want to wait for that long. That's why I'm paying the extra money. That's the Good evening, Pipe Doctor. How can I help you? Hi, good evening. Is that the um, the manager or the owner I spoke to today? Excuse me? I'm calling from I'm calling from Oregon Heights. Okay. Yeah, I spoke to somebody today. Your guy came and fixed my boiler. Was it you I spoke to earlier? Yep, it was me. Okay, I just wanted to find out from you that um the guy charged me another second um one fifteen 
for coming back the second time. Yeah. To fix it. Ma'am, ma'am, you know, you know, I did, I did you a, a courtesy, and we came back the same day to put the part in because I felt bad because you didn't have heat in your like giant home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what? Um, I'm listening. Go ahead. No, I'm just, I'm just wondering. I'm like, he already came for the first time. Yeah. To go and get the part and come back and install it. Why would yeah. he charge me again for coming back a second time? Yeah, he did. Okay, I'm asking. Because I told him to. That's the way you people operate. Excuse, yeah. You know what? Because I'm a for-profit company, and I believe in making money and not working for free for degenerate people. I know. Nobody works for free. Yeah. Nobody works for free. But I'm just only saying that because I know when um normally when people show up. Listen, I don't, I don't, ma'am, 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 I don't mm-hmm. care what normal means to you. Mm-hmm. Okay. I know what normal means to me. Okay. And that is delivering prompt and professional, reliable services to my clients. Okay. okay but and I'm not, having, I'm not having a conversation with you about a $115 trip charge. Okay. Now, that's what you normally charge. I have to understand that because if I have to work with you guys, I want to be clear on that. No, I don't, I, don't want to, I don't want you to call us again, believe it or not. Right? Because for you, to treat, for you to treat my technicians who are my family like dirt and like filth, you know what? You're, you're not the kind of customer I ever want to service again in my life. Well, you can say that now, but again, he told me we have two years warranty. Exactly. So There's a two-year warranty on the part that we installed. Correct. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that means I can call if I have any problem with that time. No, you can call if there's a problem with the, with the motor. Okay. okay. All right. No problem. All right. Uh, good luck to yourself. Thank you.